The Ultra Ball and I are here to tell you why you should not invest in this year's Megatons. Instead, why you should buy singles, because you might be surprised as to why you should stay far, far away from this year's Megatons. So let's Pokeball on into this, shall we? Or in this case, Ultra Ball on into this. And yes, it's soft, but we are hard. Ultra Ball at that subscribe button so that we can reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently sitting at 968 subscribers. Whoo, that makes our anus unrelaxed. So smash it so that we can make our holes relax as we hit the 1,000 subscribe mark. It really does mean a lot to me to see all the support. That Mystic Mind deck profile is almost at 10,000 views. Lord have mercy. My, my top three most popular videos are 20, 13, and 11,000 apiece. It is currently fourth place. So thank you all so much for the support. So I want to talk today about why you should not invest in this year's Mega Tens. And yes, at face value, there is a lot of good cards in these tins. I mean, hell, we're getting fucking Pot of Prosperity, DPE, Dragoons, Droplets, Lightning Storm, you name it. Like, your your grandma's fucking lost dentures that she lost a year ago are in here. Like, there's a lot of good shit in this set. But even with all of these good cards in this set, here is the big issue with this. Number one, all of the cards that people consider to be good there's a lot of them. So even if you buy one, two, I hate to say it, even three cases of tins, you may not necessarily get a playset of all the cards that you want. And it's different whenever you have something like a core set, right? Like Power of the Elements, where, you know, Konami says we're not going to short print things in core sets anymore. You know, mathematically going into it, that you have a high chance when you buy a case of pulling one, and if you're really lucky, two Starlight Rares in a case, plus you know just based upon how core booster set boxes are anyway, you're guaranteed two Secret Rares in each box, usually. And so, something with this that's considered a side set, yeah, you know, you can get the, oh my god, ultra rare Pharaoh printing dildo colored rare, and like, that's cool, but at the same time, if you want those ultra rare Pharaoh printings, you can just buy them on the secondary market once the prices have calmed down. Not on fucking pre-sale. <laughs> no, that's the other thing too. Do not buy shit from this set on pre-sale. I guarantee you, Pot of Prosperities on pre-sale will probably be like 50, 60 bucks. Mark my words, write it down on your calendar that I said this on this day because people are going to try and get the most value that they can on pre-sales. Is that to say that you can't swipe up some good deals on pre-sales? No, it can happen. But I personally have been burned several times with doing pre-sales. I highly recommend that you stay away from it. Give it like even a few days at most, if you're not patient like me, to let prices settle after release. Not just release for OTS stores. I'm talking about worldwide release, like to Walmart, Target, and Amazon and shit. Then you start picking up cards. Then you start getting the things that you need until the prices, you know, really dwindle down and relax their anuses. Um, so in situations like this where you do have a lot of good cards in a set, it's better to just pick up singles and play sets of things that you need. Because if you've got raw dog shit luck like I do in this game, unless you're buying core sets like I do where I, I'll buy cases from time to time, then my luck's actually pretty solid. Um, you will get play sets of cards that are considered good in the meta, but that you don't necessarily need. Like, you know, branded openings, a secret rare. With my luck, I'm going to buy a tin, and instead of pulling Pot of Prosperity, that's also a secret, I pull a fucking branded opening. Branded opening is a good meta card, but I don't need branded opening. So it's better to just wait for the set to release worldwide and just pick up the singles that you need. Even things that are lower in value, like the Flunder stuff that all, pretty much everything that was common is now a hollow at this point. You know, if you want to play like Max Rarity Flunder, just have everything hollowed out, just wait until the set comes out or trade form, get the homie hookup, you know, do things like that. Do I think overall that like, let's say sealed cases are going to go for a lot of money, like how I think it was like what the 2020 or 2019 tens are right now, like they're what, 600 for a case? There is the possibility for that. Uh, I mean... There's always the possibility for that, I feel. With more good reprint sets than others, you know, you look at something like Legendary Duelist, like dog shit from the deep. <laughs> booty booty butt cheeks from the deep, right? Where like you can literally pick up boxes for what, like $30 a piece or something? 
Like that set fucking, it flopped like a fish on the deck. I guess that's why fish sonars were so hard to pull because they knew that the set was just going to be fish out of water dog shit. Like what's good in that set? Honor Art Ghost Rare. Okay, that's $20. Forbidden Droplets, that's what, 30 to 40 And Fish Sonar. Like that, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Like there's, there's nothing good in that set other than the Ghost Rare and Droplets. And so, you know, if you were to hold on to this set for like two or three years and not open up your cases, yeah, you're going to make a shit ton of money. Because even if you look at like things that are getting reprinted, but like in different arts, Dark Magician Girl, which I've heard is hard as fuck to pull. The new Blue Eyes art, which is like the Bandai art when Bandai was making cards. And the new Red Eyes art. Like, if you pull Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Dark Magician Girl, just, uh, just put that shit in a penny sleeve and just watch it make money. Because I'm telling you, that stuff will make money. Especially the Blue Eyes and Dark Magician Girl over the years. Like, it's going to take time for it to marinate and make money. But I guarantee you, within even... I would say two to three years when the tins start leaving circulations and you maybe, maybe can find them at OTS stores. Blue eyes are going to be expensive AF. Dark Magician Girl is going to be expensive AF. Red Eyes will probably be bringing up the tail in third place because no one really wants fucking Red Eyes unless you're a, you know, Joey Wheeler fan. So if anything, pick up the core meta cards that you need on like TCG Player and things like that, eBay, whatever, homie hookup. But then also pick up a play set of Blue Eyes's, Red Eyes's, Dark Magician Girls. I don't think Dark Magician is in this set. Although if it is with a different art, then go for it. But I don't, I don't think that it is. Um, because that stuff will make you money. I mean, that we have seen that time and time again, especially with Blue Eyes. Go look at DDS Blue Eyes White Dragons near minute. Like you're talking thousands of dollars, pimp. So there's a reason, you know, why that stuff is expensive, right? But buying sealed and opening it, I just... Unless you have really good luck, I don't really feel like that this is a set worth investing in. It's going to be cool to like see people buy multiple cases and open it on YouTube. But for the average consumer, like, nah, man, just, just buy your singles. And I mean, if you're a smart money saver in general in this game and like you're not looking to get cases unless like it's a really just destructively insane set like Power of the Elements then you're just going to pick up the singles that you need on the secondary market anyway and save you money that way. Like people say Sprite's expensive, but depending on your build, it's honestly cheaper than even a case of Power of the Elements was. I mean, even at like the regular MSRP of like 740 750 and I paid 1097 for my fucking case and I pretty much broke even. So guys, what do you think in the comments down below? Please let me know. I love reading your responses. love reading your comments because I think that the tins have a lot to offer between the Egyptian God support, and I'm sure that they're going to reprint the Egyptian God cards in the tins. If they don't, then it's fine. They have a million printings at this point anyway, um, along with the other things that are in the set. I mentioned the Blue Eyes, D Shifters, Prosperities, Lightning Storms, Nibiru's, et cetera, et cetera. The Ghost Sisters. There is a lot of value in this set, but... With all of those good cards, those, what, what the hell did I say? I'm tired. I'm sorry. With all of those good cards, with ev with this set being packed with a lot of good cards, that doesn't necessarily mean like you just buy a case or two and you're going to pull everything that you need. And I think in a situation like this where you do have a lot of good cards, it's a good set. Don't get me wrong. You are better off buying the singles that you need or just buying a play set of, of just ev every meta card that you want. Because you're going to be able to get it for cheap anyway. Especially whenever everybody else is opening it and pulling it. And oh my god I pulled this card. Uh. Anyway. I think that singles are just always going to be the way to go. Period. So unless it's something like Power of the Elements. Where you should invest in that. Because there's a lot of money to be made in a set like Power of the Elements. Tactical booty booty butt cheeks. Nah, that sets liquid ass with big old chunks inside, as we like to say. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.